cool. All right, so we're going to count down from, from you guys, and then you just whack that until that falls over. Okay. Yeah, here we go. Catherine, are you ready? Yes. Audience, are you ready? Yes. yes. Catherine, am I ready? Yes. Probably. We'll go anyway, shall we? Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Yay! Woo! Give her applause, Catherine! Right, so, currently spiraling down this tube, we have an alkali solution of sodium hydroxide. You guys say that with me? Alkali... No, don't bother, it's okay. <laughs> Uh, basically, we've put a little bit of drain cleaner into some water, and this has pushed this uh, solution down a thing called the pH scale. But that would be a clear solution ordinarily. So we've also added a chemical indicator to it that lets us know where this falls on that scale. If this was at the other end of that scale, if it was an acidic solution, then that mix would turn perfectly clear. We've actually added some acid to this cup here. So that indicator has stopped work, stopped indicating where it is. When that cup gets full enough, it'll launch that snooker ball on a journey through the first part of the machine. Here we go. Our next experiment, you guys can try at home. If you can follow me down the machine. We've tipped some vinegar, which is acetic acid, into this cup here. And if you mix that with some sodium bicarbonate, or bicarb soda, you should get a reaction that produces lots of carbon dioxide gas. That's why it's bubbling and frothing away there. Now as we tip what we have scientifically determined to be the least bouncy legume, that is the red lentil, into our funnel here, some of you can get quite close because we actually have a chemical sensory component of the chain reactor set up in front of you. We've got some smells coming out of you, and you actually using chem chemo reception at the moment to interact with that component. Over here we have some polystyrene, a strong cross-linked polymer. But if we tip some acetone, some nail polish remover onto that, those cross-links get broken apart. Here we're simulating diffusion. Diffusion is a chemical term that describes the behaviour of two different liquids or gases in the same chamber. We'll start out with a clear line between them. But over time, just with the random motion of those particles, we should get some mixing happening. We should start to see some mixing occurring in our chambers down here. Up in this spoon, I have some iodine. It starts out as a kind of ready brown colour, but iodine is a starch indicator. So when it hits the starch in that paper, it reacts and turns bright purple. As we launch another snooker ball through the machine, we're now going to make something that's sometimes referred to as a potato battery. We see two different metallic rods, one made of zinc, another made of copper, into something that allows the transmission of electrons, in this case, a potato. And you should get a voltage running through that system. It's important to point out here, though, that we're not actually getting the energy out of the potato. We're getting it out of the two different metals that we've stuck inside. We're just basically using that potato to move electrons around, and that's all electricity is. In here, you may notice that we've put a small white tablet. This is a fizzy headache tablet, an effervescent tablet. Uh, like the kind that you find in mum or dad's hangover kit. <laughs> that reacts with the water to produce lots of carbon dioxide gas. It also dissolves away. When it dissolves away completely, this rod will fall down and start flipping over these chemical symbols to reveal the element that they represent. This arrangement of things is called the Periodic Table of Elements. And it remains to this day one of the most elegant pieces of scientific design that the world has ever seen. When Dmitri Mendeleev had the dream that inspired this format, this arrangement, there were certain gaps in our knowledge, certain places we didn't know what would go in there. But when they, Dmitri made this up, he finally kind of made some predictions. He was able to say, well, there'll be something in this blank spot here. It'll have this atomic weight. It'll belong to this family of chemicals and it'll behave in this way when it encounters other types of chemicals. When they finally filled in those blanks, they matched Dimitri's predictions perfectly. It's that well designed. Now I mentioned that we use chemical symbols to represent the elements on the table. So the finale for our chain, for our chain reactor is our very own chemical symbol. Get it? That's a, that's a chemical symbol? It, that's exactly what that deserves, really. Okay, so thank you very much for joining us here at Atomized, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you have a very nice day. And with that, 
we come to the end.